Spoilers! Spoilers! All the spoilers! If you are running Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen and you didn't read the description of the video, this contains spoilers about the contents of the book. You have been warned! Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and we are unpacking the uh, Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen as per your request. You guys asked for it, so here it is. Now, before we even launch into the actual book itself, we need to establish what it is that our players need to know. And before we even get there, we as the GMs, need to understand if everything that's in the book is ready for us to use or if there are things that we're going to have to tweak, adjust, or change. And it never hurts to look at what others have done, learn a trick or two from what they have done, or learn from their mistakes and realize that you're doing it right all along. We all like to know that we are doing it correctly. Another thing that I quite like is when you hit that like button. Uh, see what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> uh. So the book, it very clearly lays out the five adventures. But adventures do not mean story arc. Story is emergent in the conflict or in the opposition of the player characters and the NPCs. When their goals are in opposition, that's when we get story. Now, the adventures as they are laid out, they may work, they may not work. We don't know until we've identified the goals of the villains. There are multiple villains, so we need to unpack that. So this allows us to start looking for holes. Where do the goals of the villains align with the presented adventures? Where do they not align with the presented adventures? And where do the adventures get in the way of the goals of the NPCs? I hope it makes sense, but we've got to we've got to look for inconsistencies first, because if there aren't any, that's great. We can sit back and we can run it as written. But if there are, we need to fix those holes. All right, but how do we see holes? What are we what are we looking for exactly? No, it's a good question. So so what we're looking for is where there are unclear goals of the NPCs where those goals are not being pursued in the adventure, where the NPC is being forced to do something that is contrary to their goal or which that does not further their goal. So they're just there because they're there. Uh, we're also looking for adventures that have nothing to do with the goals of either of, of any of the NPCs that are involved in this story. Um, so that's what we're looking for. Are the goals of the NPCs driven forward in each of the adventures? And are the players made aware of those goals in each of the adventures? Because if they're not, then the, N the NPCs will succeed and, and there's, no, there's no conflict, there's no, there's no story. All right, that's clear. That's clear. Carry on. Okay, so here are the five adventures as they are presented in the book with a basic summary from me. It's not a, it's not a completely accurate summary, but it kind of gives you an idea of what each of the adventures is about. Adventure number one. When home burns, the PCs encounter the dragon invasion and run away from it. Number two. Shadow of War. Minor skirmishes. And we meet Lord Soth, who is a subplot, theoretically. The Northern Wastes, number three. The PCs go looking for clues and find the city and an army. Hmm, okay. Number four, City of Lost Names, the city that they were looking for. Number three, exploration leads to destruction of plot and new threat. Uh-huh. Step number five, Siege of Calaman, destruction of Lord Soth and battle with Kansaldi. Now, if that does sound... Uh, wait, who's Kansaldi? Where the hell did she come from? And why do we care? Where we would normally expect a twist that the plot is not the actual plot in the middle, what they've done is they've introduced a subplot instead. Seems solid, yes? Well, not really. It becomes problematic when you are introduced to the villain of the campaign, because this is a campaign, arguably, uh, you do want some clear indications. You want some some something to aim towards. And so uh, we've got three very 
I would say, strong villains in Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. We've got Lord Bacchorus and his son, and they're mentor-type villains, in a way. I'm, I'm clubbing them together. We have Lord Soth, who's a never-present nemesis, a uh, villain. Uh, none of them are nemesis. And then we have Kansaldi Fire Eyes, also a never-present. So do you start to see the problem here? Do you start to see the problem? Now, Lord Bacchorus and his son, they represent the theme of the book, which is hubris. Uh, very, very clearly, they are mentor-type uh, villains because although they are with the PCs all the time, they are acting as a reverse mirror. They are presenting the bad ideas to the PCs and, as a result, hopefully, will be guiding the PCs in the right direction, even though they're not necessarily aware that they're doing that. So that still puts them in the mentor role. That's fine. It's good to have mentors. We're introduced to them in Act 1. They are dealt with in Act 5. It's all very neat. Thank you very much. They are great villains. Very nice. Lord Soth, however, comes in, and Lord Soth has a completely separate agenda and goal to... Theoretically, the entire purpose of the the, the campaign book, uh, the adventure book, his goal is to gain or gather the mourning, the mourning, there is just no other way to say it, the mourning flames, as in mourn the death of, the mourning flames, the flames of mourning. Uh, and uh, he wants to gather these flames so that he can raise an, an, a, a whole bunch of death dragons. How cool is that? That's his goal, is to raise death dragons, right? So we need to make sure that his goal is then followed through. So Lord Soth needs to achieve his goal, and, or at least he needs to come close to achieving his goal, and the PCs need to be able to stop him from achieving that goal. Uh, right. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, should he remain a never-present villain? As a never-present villain, Lord Soth is great because he is technically way higher than the PCs will ever be in the adventure series. So making him a never-present makes sense. It's cool. It kind of keeps him out of the way. But his goal of raising these death dragons, I think, is awesome. And yet, I feel like in Adventure 4, it's missed... And then when we do fight him in Adventure 5, although not really him, but all of the aspects and things that he's been kind of gathering, we're not even fighting Death Dragons, really. Or it's not as a direct result of his actions. The PCs don't really stop him in so much as they stop the other plot from happening, which I find very muddling and confusing. It needs to be clearer somehow. So that means changing up how Adventure 4 unfolds. It needs to be more about Lord Soth and his wonderful dragons than the dragon army, which is going to focus more heavily in Act 5, and that's where we can also introduce, or at least resolve, then the other villain. Right? Right, so, to the next villain, which is Consoldi Fire Eyes. Now, she was kept, I'm assuming, as an ever-present because she's a CR-11 and she rides a dragon, which is a CR-10. So in those early adventures, if the players ever were to encounter her, the player characters would die a very quick death. So they kind of keep her as as whispered, oh, I shall have revenge for, you know, Kansaldi will avenge me, that kind of stuff. And you're going, yeah, look, Telling PCs about the big bad is never as effective as showing them the big bad unless you want the big bad to remain this mysterious force. Now, we've already got a mysterious uh, force, right? Lord Soth is running around. That's player confusion straight off the bat. They're not going to know exactly who is who. So how do we shift Kansaldi Fire Eyes to being a blunt force trauma villain rather than a never-present. Because we can't make Lord Soth a blunt force trauma because he can't face the PCs head-on. He has to be never-present. He has to be evasive and, and not seeking to engage with the PCs. Otherwise, he will just destroy them. Cancelidi, there is a chance that the PCs will win, but 
there is also a significant chance that she will win if the PCs get to fight her too soon. So how do we balance this all out? To change Consoldi into a blunt force uh, villain, what we need to do is we need to have her present more. She needs to be throwing her weight around. This is what blunt force villains do. So in the first adventure, where there is the attack on the little village of Vogler and, you know, the players have to escape, she should be there. She should be almost doing the attack on her own to show her magnificent power and why the PCs should run the hell away from her. But why would she be doing this? What Her goal, remember, is to invade, to lead this great army on an invasion and to take out this entire area. But she has a sub-goal. And again, this is where the layering of this, this uh, villain, I think, is good in the book, but it just doesn't come across when you're actually looking at how it's going to play out, at least not in my opinion, is that she's also looking for these ancient relics from the previous age, the previous um, Istar god being priest disaster thing. She's looking for relics from that. So we know that Ispin, hopefully, will be a more important character uh, in, in the PC's lives. I've got plans for that next week's episode. Uh, so what are we going to do with, with this? Well, she's looking for something that Ispin had. What that's going to do is that's going to tie the party who arguably they're going to get Ispin's green shield, right? Because he has a green shield or, or whatever. They're going to get that. Now, if they know that this is what Consoldi is looking for, it automatically gives them a direct link to Consoldi. It, it ties them in to her. Then, if we bring her in in the third adventure, which is where they're running around the wastes and they're looking for clues, we could have her doing something in the distance because... <laughs> Let's be honest, she's powerful. She will destroy the PCs. But if she's doing something in the distance, they get to see her in action again. And there is an NPC that is on the PC side throughout the entire series. Great little NPC. I can't wait to play him. Consoldi could attack and do something to him. Just to drive home, again, this idea that she is terrifying, she is powerful. Because then in the fifth adventure, when the PCs actually confront her and are of high enough level and have got the magical items and things that they need, that showdown is so much sweeter. It's so, 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 so much cooler. Because the party are invested. They're like, yeah, we saw you. We ran away from you the first time around, but not this time. No further. We draw the line here. <laughs> that kind of thing. And just like that, just like that, simple, looking for the holes, looking for the connections, looking for the goals of the villains versus what the adventures are and adjusting the adventures to fit the goals because ultimately we know that it's the goals of the villains which will be adjusting and adapting as the player characters intervene. So when the player characters invariably invariably they are going to deviate from the adventure path. They are going to attack early or they're going to go and do something else or whatever the situation might be. Uh, they are going to change up the story. We need to change. Consoldi Fire Eyes, she changes. She goes from being a never present, she's got to be a blunt force. She's going to appear now in Adventure 1. She's going to appear in Adventure 3. She's going to appear in Adventure 5. She is going to be looking for something that the PCs get perhaps in Adventure 1, something that we've got to think about there. Um, that green shield uh, connection with Ispin. What I really like about that is it ties it more into the whole Ispin thing. I've always had an issue with that. We, we, we you, you know that. Um, so that's Consoldi, Lord Soth, Adventure 4. Doesn't get rewritten. I'm not talking about just throwing it out and starting again. We add or we, we realign or adjust the parameters of Adventure 4 to allow Lord Soth to have his subplot, to get and remain an ever present, but to get his death dragons so that they're not just, oh, well, yes, you've, you know, you've killed him. He has a death dragon. Boom. Uh, fight the death dragon. We want a little bit more finesse than that. That's, that's the whole point of this channel. So we know that we're going to be changing him. Lord Bacchus and his son, nothing to change. The story progression is amazing. It's lovely. They are mentor style villains. They're going to just run through. They're going to do their thing. The players are going to hate them. I think that's absolutely awesome. And that's it. So now we are ready to go, yes, we have identified the weaknesses or potential pitfalls, in my opinion. 
Okay, and we can now start preparing and planning, which is what we're going to do next week. What are your thoughts? Do you think as written that we don't need any changes? Leave some comments down below. Uh, perhaps you think I've missed something or perhaps I did miss something. I mean, I have read through the book. I have looked for for things to, to try and support my 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 way of thinking. Um, but comments down below. That's that's the only way to do it. Until next time, I think all that it uh, remains for me to say is happy gaming.